Hi everyone, welcome to Draftscapes, I'm Chris Tuccio. In this episode, we're gonna learn how to use a circle template, an essential tool for drawing trees, shrubs, site furnishings, and for making nicely rounded corners for turning radii, traffic islands, or patios. All that and more ahead. So for this lesson, the first thing I want to discuss is the actual purchasing of a circle template. You'll often see a variety of different templates available for purchase either online or at your local arts and supply store. The circle template I'm using uh, is the True Circle Master by Alvin. Um, you know, it's an older circle template that I've, I've, I've picked up uh, and kept over the years. There's a variety uh, just like it. Um, the one that I uh, like uh, the Picket circle template. I'll link in the description below. It's a really good circle template with lots of large and small range of sizes, uh, very versatile. Now, you don't need this specific type of circle guide. There are a variety of different options out there, but I would advise that you look for something with, again, a wide range of circle sizes in one template. Sometimes you'll see art or drafting supply stores sell sets of different smaller circle guides, uh, with each guide only having a small range of sizes. I'm not a huge fan of those circle kits. Uh, I found it more efficient and organized to just simply have them all in one template. Um, and then also, you don't really need anything larger than just three inches. Uh, if you need anything larger, in those rare circumstances, you can just uh, you know reach for your compass uh, to draw a larger circle. Um, one thing that I, I want to make sure that you also uh, look for are these uh, radii markings. So on the corners of these circle templates uh, you should see that they're not all the same uh, radius. Uh, you'll actually notice that there are guides here so we'll actually use these later on in this video uh, but you want to uh, make sure your circle template has those. And uh, this circle template doesn't have it, but uh, you will notice some templates will have a ruler uh, or a metric on uh, one of the sides. And so that's also very useful. You don't have to reach for your scale uh, so often. You can just turn your circle template around and measure something quite quickly, which is nice. Um, now, those are the templates that you want to get. I also want to talk a little bit about the types of templates that you want to avoid. Um, so, uh, one thing uh, to avoid is a template such as this. Uh, these are uh, very common uh, at some types of, of uh, drafting stores, and they're templates for drawing different types of trees and shrubs. And although they're well-intentioned, and this is an Alvin landscape template, um, they're, they're pretty poor in both the uh, development of a skill of a designer and also the graphic quality. Uh, you're going to get a lot of ugly looking trees if you just only use this type of template for your trees and shrubs. So um, this is a very old one that I picked up a while ago uh, just for uh, teaching purposes to show students but you know it's really not one that I would ever use in a professional setting. Uh, as you've seen with other videos it's pretty easy with uh, the circle template as a guide uh, and some quick practice that you can draw really beautiful types of trees much better than you would get with this type of, of template. Another template that I would say, you know, just wait or don't waste your money on right now is an ellipse template. So something like this. Uh, an ellipse template, uh, although again, uh, it's well intentioned, we really don't have a lot of use for that in landscape design unless you're doing things like uh, water features or you're having some abstract types of shapes for your design. You know, if you notice uh, for your particular business, you're doing a lot of designs with these types of shapes, by all means, pick one up. But uh, if you're picking up a, sort of a starter set or a starter drafting kit, definitely leave this one off. Uh, you're not really going to use it. Okay, so uh, what we're going to do is we're going to start with just our uh, regular circle template. And we're going to assume that I'm drawing just uh, a path. So I'm going to use my, my lead holder, my technograph here, and I'm going to draw a pathway. And we'll say that I'm actually going to make this a realistic example. I'm going to draw it at a particular scale. I'm going to have an alley of trees, or in other words, just a row of trees along one side 
of that pathway. So we're going to use our circle template uh, to help draw those trees. So I'm going to take my scale, okay, and I'm going to use 20 scale in this example. Now, if you haven't already uh, looked at our uh, or my video on how to use architectural and engineering scales, again, I'll make sure that it's linked below. Uh, so check that out. Um, but I have a plan, and I'm going to be drawing a 200 foot path. Uh, at 20 scale. So uh, basically I'm going to start uh, on one side and I'm going to work all the way uh, to the other. Um, again, I'm using just a regular engineering scale and I'm using my Technograph lead holder as my my marking tool and I'll make sure that all of these tools are listed in the description uh, so you can follow along. Okay, so I have a simple type of, of path, and hopefully that's showing up dark enough for you. Okay, so now let's say that I want to actually have a, um, a line of trees along this path. Now, it might not be trees, it might be shrubs or perennials. For, for this uh, uh, particular one, we're going to do a row of trees. So we're going to use a fairly common example. Let's say I'm doing a, a row of street trees, like a Zelkova. Okay, so... We're going to take, uh, you know, standard Zelkova green vase cultivar, and they range from anywhere from 30 to 35 feet. So, um, you know, we're going to space them 50 feet apart, and if a Zelkova reaches about 35 feet in width, we're going to draw it at around 70% of that mature size, which would be about 25 inches in width. Uh, sorry, 25 feet in width. So it's typical uh, to to draw your actual plant material for your trees at around 70 to 75% mature size. So when drafting your final plan, um, you typically want to draw your trees at about 75% their mature size, but that isn't really a hard and fast rule. If a plant ends up looking better uh, drawn full size, uh, at 100%, then, then by all means draw it that way. You just don't want to run into situations where you're being dishonest with your representation to your client. So we're going to draw a tree, a Zelkova, that's 25 feet wide, meaning it has a diameter of 25 feet. So if I'm at a scale of 20, I'm going to just use my Copic uh, pen here just to make sure that we're, we're all seeing it. So right now I'm at 20 scale. Okay, I'm at 20 scale, and I want to draw a tree that's 25 feet in width, or diameter. Okay, so if I'm at 1 to 20, and I need a tree that's 25 feet, that means I need a circle template that has a diameter of 1 and 1 quarter. Because 1 quarter of an inch uh, of one quarter of 20 is 5. So if I'm at 1 to 20 scale and 1 inch equals 20 feet, that means 1 quarter of an inch equals 5 feet. So I need 1 and 1 quarter. Uh, and again, if this is confusing you, you can always just reach for your scale and measure out your circle template to make sure you're in the right one. But you'll notice that if I do 1 to 1 quarter or 1 and 1 quarter of a circle template, um, I'm going to get a tree that has at 20 scale, a 25 foot diameter to it. So I'm going to simply place my circle template on my, my plan, and I'm going to start uh, from left, uh, sorry, from right to left here, okay, so I don't smudge. And I'm just going to simply draw my circle with my one and one quarter diameter circle, okay. So I have my one circle for my tree at one and one quarter. Okay, now I want them spaced 50 feet apart. So if they're spaced 50 feet apart and I know that the diameter is uh, 25 feet, that means I'm going to need to use my scale or my circle template to measure out 50 feet on center. So you know, you don't have to just reach for your scale. You can actually do this with your circle template. So I'll just put my uh, pencil in the center here. Then I'll move over. This would be 25 feet. And now the center here, this would be the center, this would be 50. So I simply moved it over two. And now my circle, 
the center of my circle for my next tree would be right there. I simply moved two trees over. If each tree is 25 feet in diameter, I just moved two circles over, or two trees over, uh, to get an on center of 50 feet. Now if I use my scale, I can just simply confirm that. I take my scale at 1 inch equals 50, uh, 20 feet, so that means if I'm at 50, I'm going to be right here, and look at that, it's the exact same thing, okay? So I can use my circle template in lieu of my scale if I don't want to consistently uh, keep reaching for it. So I'm just going to draw another circle here with my circle template. Okay, and I could keep marching along and doing the same thing. And just keep on centering my circle. And you'll see that it's much easier to do it this way because now I don't have to worry about actually reaching for my scale. And I'll do one more. Okay, so now I have five trees spaced 50 feet on center with a 25 foot diameter at 1 to 20 scale. And so now I could come back and I can use uh, sort of a pen to try and fill these in and make them kind of look nice like actual trees for my, my design. I'm just going to do really quick kind of rough looking trees. By no means are these graphically beautiful, but they're going to show up a lot better on the video. So we'll do these like this. Okay, so that is how, pretty simple, you can use your circle template just to draw guidelines for trees on your plan view. Okay, now another way in which we can use a circle template is to actually round out uh, edges of corners. So let's say that we wanted this sharp edge to be filleted. So uh, FI... <coughs> Okay, so another way in which we can use a circle template is not just to draw guides for trees or to use it as sort of a metric for drawing trees along a path as we just saw, but we can also use it to round out edges or round out corners. So uh, in some instances you might have a hard sharp corner like this in your design, whether it's a streetscape um, um, like in an urban setting or some sort of patio that you're doing for a client that you need to actually round out to make it look nicer or more inviting. There are a variety of reasons where you might want to actually round out the corner. And a circle template is a useful tool for that. And that is also why we like having these rounded edges with metrics on them, okay, with some sort of, of unit of measurement. And so with our circle template, you'll see there's two ways of doing it. So with, I'll, I'll show you both ways, um, but the first way is if you have a circle template that actually has these radii on it, it makes it a lot easier. So let's say that we're still at 1 to 20 scale. Okay, 1 to 20 scale. Okay, if we're at 1 to 20 scale, let's say that I want to round this edge with a radius of one inch. So it has a radius of 20 feet. One inch equals 20 feet at one to 20 scale. So I want the radius of this edge to be 20, okay? Well, I could simply do it if I find my corner that has the indicated radius of one inch, okay, I, which is this one that's right next to it right now, I could simply align the tick marks that are already there and then simply draw a line that traces over them to create that rounded edge. I'm going to make sure that's nice and dark so you can see it. 
like so. Okay. Another way of doing it is I can actually find my circle that actually has a two inch diameter to it. So if I have a two inch diameter, that means I have a one inch radius. I'm looking for a one inch radius circle. So uh, for a uh, one inch radius for my actual rounded corner. So I would, if I want a one inch radius, I need to find a two inch diameter because obviously uh, a radius is half of the diameter. So if I don't have the turning radio on my corners, I'll just simply go to my circle that has a two inch diameter. So that's this one right here. I have my tick marks. I'll line them up the same way that I did before. Okay. I'll make sure that they align correctly and then I'll draw my line. Okay. Just to connect them. And then I can come back and I can erase um, this corner portion that I don't want. Okay, and I, now I have a nice turning radii uh, to this edge that I could ink over. The last thing that I'll say um, about the circle template before we go is you'll notice that I actually never used uh, my drafting pen uh, during this tutorial within the circle template and that's very important. If you want these circle templates or your scales to last uh, a good amount of time, you don't actually ever want to ink on them or over the top of them because for the scale you're going to ruin the actual metric that you're looking at. Um, and for the circle template, uh, not only will it smudge, but you're going to get marks all over your circle template that can actually um, move uh, or uh, be put on your other areas of your drafting board uh, during the same drafting session. So uh, keep the drafting pen away while you're using a circle template and only use your drafting pencil. So we always want to use graphite with our circle template. And then if you want to, uh, you can ink over the lines that you created with uh, uh, some sort of adjustable triangle or triangle with an inked edge or an inking edge. Okay. So make sure you're not using any sort of drafting pen with these. Okay, so that's about it. There you have it. Um, we looked at uh, different ways in which you can use a circle template and some uh, do's and don'ts about purchasing. If you liked this video and you like the content, make sure that you hit like and you subscribe to the channel. I will see you at the next video.